Good guns, fight. All stations, brace for cast off. Whoa! What's going on, guys? This is Nomis Yek aboard the Pillar of Autumn. The year is 2552. We have left the planet Reach on an unknown collision course with with something. With collision course with space. <laughs> we are colliding with space. <laughs> oh, it seems like we're entering slip space. I better get to my cryopod. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> this is the Pillar of Autumn. We're away. Packages with us. Ah, there we go. That's what we call a cold open in the business of television. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to the Domain Terminal, episode two. This is our number one show where we talk Halo news, domain news, we have unboxings, guests on the show, all sorts of really cool content revolving around the, the expanding Halo universe. Have a cold one, have a bit of fun. Today's episode has a very special theme, and you can actually check the timestamps out of this video, so you can skip to whatever you want. And I want to start today's video by introducing the name chosen by the community for our brand new <laughs> beefy boy. His name is The Collector. The name was chosen by Tommy Gun Productions and the collector will be staring into your souls for each one of these domain terminal videos. I also want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Atom Tech. They are an incredible producer of monitor mounts, phone stands, and selfie tripods. More details later in the video. So we're going to start, as we always do with these videos, with Halo News. We'll start with a little bit of a touchy subject. There was an episode of Ask 343 recently where we got to ask our own community questions to the company. First of all, the wildlife will not be hostile in the game and there are no playable elites. Let's get an F in the chat for our fallen brothers. As we start to rebuild, this hillside will remain barren, a memorial to heroes fallen. They ennobled all of us, and they shall not be forgotten. I know a lot of people were very excited to play as elites in Halo Infinite. I think the decision is questionable, but if losing that means they can focus on more, it might be the right trade-off. I just wanted to play as an Elite Ultra. Uh, it's, uh, it's a missed opportunity. But then again, when you look at Halo MCC, it is definitely something they could add in the future. And then Jazzware released a stop motion animation to celebrate their new World of Halo scale. It's a little late because we've had these toys for a while, but my goodness, is it a cool animation. Specifically, it kind of shows you details on what the shock rifle is gonna look like, because we still don't know, but you can see that it's charging up. I, might, I think it might be some kind of rail gun for the Banish, and I'm all about it. Lastly, and I saw this on my Discord at first, and I, I literally couldn't believe it was real. There is now Moa flavored Pringles. Moa flavored. Uh, Peggy, this, you know, have you seen that chicken I chase around in, in the Halo games sometimes? They've made Pringle, Pringle flavored Halo Reach birds. Pringle, Pringle flavored birds. <laughs> And now we're gonna get on with today's unboxing. And this time, it's a sponsorship, guys. Yeah, I've gotta feed my family, okay? And this is a really cool thing. This company, Atomtech, actually reached out to me and sent me this for free, and they delivered it within like two days, which is wild. I think they have a warehouse in Shenzhen, which is pretty close to Hong Kong. And I just had to go with this Bluetooth selfie stick because I genuinely think this looks so futuristic. So we're gonna get this unboxed. And guys, they have a ton of monitor stands tripods, selfie sticks, all on their website. Look what happens when you extend the tripod out. Whoa! The selfie stick comes out of the top. That is incredible. 
So way. And then look at that. That's really tight. It's screwed in so you can have a lot of flexibility there. Choose exactly the angle you want. We got a selfie stick. That's incredible, honestly. Do you like it, Collector? Do you, do you like the new tripod? We got a second tripod in the house, baby. Pop this out here. And it's a little Bluetooth remote. I'm sure, I'm sure you would like this. I'm sure your girlfriend, maybe, maybe your grandma's an up-and-coming vlogger. Maybe she wants to get going. I'll be carrying this with me all around Hong Kong. Thank you very much for the sponsorship. Go to a tumtech.com and check out all of their range. You will not regret it. All right, we're rolling on to the main section of this video. Who remembers? Specifically, who remembers the assault on squad 45? I've seen many times on my Discord and all over Facebook, people love this show. And it was a big part of my childhood, a big part of my collecting journey. And recently I just came across the YouTube channel, Plasti Animations, Pablo Lorenz Claymation. And this guy is the brains behind that original series. He made all of the animations. And I watched his behind the scenes, showing the excruciating detail behind every shot that they took, the massive dioramas they built. I just had to show you guys. And then also just reminisce on those good old days of Squad 45. So this making of series, it really just made me respect animators more. The time it takes. You're not just producing this animation. They are storyboarding it, drilling and adding extra limbs so the things like the locuses are better supported, creating these massive battlescapes, full green screens, and hand animating every single cell of this video. And part one to four of Squad 45 clocks in at nearly 12 minutes, so the dedication to this team is very noteworthy. When you look at the behind the scenes, it's incredible. So let's roll off my notes of all all of the parts of the assault on Squad 45, all my favorite bits. Maybe this will be some nostalgia to you. Maybe this will be the first time, and I hope after this you'll go and watch the full animations as well. From the moment these videos start, I remember my love for the Halo Wars soundtrack. That album specifically got me into making videos. I just thought every single track was just so hard hitting, so enjoyable, and so enthusiastic. So part one starts with one of the Hornets being destroyed, and I love when that brick flies towards the camera. Then you look in the Spartans visor and there's a whole Covenant army. There were lots of personal highlights from that part one, like for example when the Gauss Hog gets sort of tickled by the Locust, or when the Grunts explode into confetti. There's some strange things like how the Gauss Hog has rapid fire mode, and the completely useless Wolverine that just arrives, spins, and gets destroyed. That reminds me of like when I board a vehicle in Halo sometimes, there's just so many people shooting at me, I kind of just panic and blow up. And then at the end of the animation, they're pinned down, they're falling off the cliff, and it looks like all hope is lost which rolls on to part two. <laughs> They fall off the cliff and you think they're all dead, but no, they're riding the pelican. Now I see part one and two as sort of one continuing story and then three and four as another. And really what this show also does, every part you see the catalog of Mega Constructs, Mega Blocks sets expanding massively, especially into part four. So part one is just the basic original lineup. In part two, you start to see the ODSTs, baby. You've got Hayabusa, Gremlin, Scorpion. You've got all these new sets coming in. It's a very exciting time, as well as some of those Arctic sets, which are some of the fan favorites. Basically, part two is just ODSTs kicking ass for like a few minutes. Awesome sniper deployment on a hill. Badass combat montage with that back smack. We got all the jackals standing there and they all just fall down. We've also got those CGI bombs dropping, which is pretty funny. And at the very end, the hunter survives. I mean, this is just to go over a 
few things. I love the use of bricks. I think it's fantastic when some of the vehicles get injured slightly, bricks fall off them. The VFX and SFX are just, f they're phenomenal. Just an enormous credit to the producers and creators of these animations. We're on to part three, capturing the Arbiter. Now this is when they were really trying to make a tangible story to all of this. They were also introducing all of their new named characters. Awesome snow battlescape that they're using for this animation. It's all about capturing the Arbiter. They use incredible clay effects, especially when shooting one of the ice blocks with a Spartan laser. You have even more time to shine for my ODSTs. You even have details like the Halo Waypoint logo shown on the Pelican screen, and also the introduction of the Falcon as well. Ah, I love that vehicle. They really need to remake it. Then they have that comical freeze at the end. Freeze! And they even include like clearly a time lapse of the Arbiter. They must have put him in the freezer and then just time lapsed it to show that ice melting. It's an absolutely incredible one. And I still to this day don't really understand why the Arbiter didn't just splatter the Spartans instead of turning around, but it leaves it on a cliffhanger with all those phantoms. I remember like in terms of iconic moments of my collecting journey, I remember watching that for the first time, seeing that army of phantoms and not only thinking I need an army of phantoms, which I eventually did, Get, but also thinking, man, the scale of this thing, like this is like an actual Halo movie. I thought it was fantastic, fantastic. Part four, the Arbiter's Escape. I know most people are very jealous of this, but it shows the original unreleased Firebase. This thing is something of legends that Mega Constructs or Mega Blocks really seemed like they were going to release at one point, but it got lost in the ether and kind of remade in the new Pelican inbound alternate build, sort of. But I just can't buy two Pelicans Mega Constructs. I can't afford it. And then we've got the Vampire, Skirmisher, Jump Pack Brute, Elephant, Spade, Revenant, Shade Turret. This is when Mega Constructs was just going going nuts. They had all the money, Halo 4 was just about to launch, Halo Reach was doing really well, and they just had all the cash, all of the new molds, all of the new vehicles. I mean, Halo Reach just introduced so many dozens of new vehicles and weapons and armor skins that they had everything to play with. So this was when they were getting silly, they were getting incredible, like they even have a bubble shield animation. They got so much to offer. It's an epic battle. I would definitely recommend watching that more than any of the other parts. And then at the end when the Arbiter escapes, they have a monkey chain made of grunts, which I was just, I was, it's just the greatest thing. And then that turret is taking them out just as the Arbiter's climbing. And then they have that really good uh, sort of <laughs> like laughing effect at the end. It rounds off this amazing series and it ends on a cliffhanger of the Master Chief awakened from cryo sleep. You guys might think I'm very enthusiastic about this, and I am, but not without reason. This was one of the defining moments of my Halo journey, and every time they released one of these, I felt the Mega Bloks community blow up overnight. We would always show these animations in sort of like a highlight reel on the main stage at Blocks Fest, so it, it's a legacy thing for me. As we see with a lot of different IPs out there, when new generations grow up and get introduced to the hobby, they find these old things, these old TV shows, whatever it may be, that people already 
had in their childhood, and then they can grow up with it as well. It's it's a whole new thing. So I'm hoping that you guys go and watch the Assault on Squad 45. If you want to see more of these kind of videos where I could review Thrill Squad next or the Battle of New Mombasa, I would love to do any of that. I, I love you, Squad 45. I love you. Uh, also, oh, also, there he goes. Also, make sure to check out Plasti Animations on YouTube. He's a really cool guy. It's time for our game. Our prize winner from last time. I asked you to guess what set this wheel was from. And pretty much everyone guessed correctly, which really surprised me. You guys are, are weird in terms of knowing what this, I would have never been able to guess this. But almost everybody guessed correctly. And the winner was the Green Camo Man V. This is indeed from the Jack Rabbit. Yeah, what an awesome set. I have a couple of these. So the Green Camo Man V PM me. And today's game is a classic carnival romp. <laughs> guess how many bricks are in the jar? Hmm. Well, there's, a, there's at least five. Could be more than a hundred. Hmm. It's up to you to decide. The winner or the closest guess, I'll be sending out a Halo Infinite armor coating downloadable code from Jazzware Toys. Good luck to all who enter. Okay, that pretty much brings us to the end of the Domain Terminal episode two. Nomis Yak has been having a, an interesting time in slip space. I wonder how he's doing now. Uh, I might go check on him. BRB. <laughs> I have been in cryo sleep for unknown amount of time. I don't know why we left Reach. Maybe it was the Covenant. But what now? What? The what? Oh, jeez. It couldn't possibly. The Covenant couldn't have followed us all the way here. You heard the lady. Move like you got a purpose. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. <laughs> I gotta go, guys. I gotta prepare for war. 